Minister International Kenya, Irungu Hilton here, will uh, speak to this particular report. Let's just begin with the report first of all, then we go to Kamala Azari's visit and a raft of other issues. So far, what is the new revelations? Um, I think this is coming uh, you know, during the epic of time when mm -hmm. we see a lot of debate around human rights, asylums, there's a contentious debate about uh, also the asylum uh, bill mm -hmm. from the UK, uh, but they're going full steam ahead regardless of, of what even the European courts are saying, mm -hmm. that this is a pure disregard of, uh, you know, or the violation of human rights. Yes. The Amnesty International Human Rights Report for 2022, I think, is significant in a couple of ways. One is that um, it is, of course, this year that we are celebrating the 75th um, anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So it's, a, it's an important year, uh, not just for Kenya, but I think globally. Um, but the other significance is really is that the findings are that the international multilateral system is now unfit. It is unfit for purpose. Um, and we are starting to see cracks in the double standards in which complex um, uh, uh, conflicts and emergencies are being handled. Just to give you a couple of examples, um, you know, both humanitarian responses and justice and accountability responses are, uh, you know, are being measured when it comes to places like, for example, uh, Ethiopia or Syria or Yemen. But on the other hand, when we look at Ukraine, we see actually the full force of uh, the, particularly the West, um, uh, the Western governments, both Europe and America, in terms of responding to those conflicts, despite the fact that in some cases, the violence, the mass war crimes that we're seeing in places like Ethiopia, um, and increasingly also in, in DRC, unfortunately, they don't get the same attention from the United Nations or the international community. So I think that's the, the second most you know, significant thing. Um, we have seen, for example, uh, you know, in the case of Putin, he has now been indicted by the ICC. We have not seen anything um, comparable in the case of Munima or in the case of Ethiopia. And lastly, I think, you know, uh, just coming back to the issue of um, immigration and refugee asylum, um, in the case of um, Ukraine, Europe opened its doors. Right, but less than a year or two later, uh, earlier, and in fact during the 2022, we did not see the same um, respect, the same dignity, and the same support for um, uh, you know refugees coming out of uh, the Middle East, for example, and places like Yemen and Syria. We've seen, for example, the American government taking a very strong stance on Ukraine, but not on apartheid. Israel. Mm -hmm. So I think these are the things that I think Africans need to debate. And, you know, it's not just even in terms of foreign policy, but we need to look at the domestic human rights governance of certain countries. Um, it's or the blacks in Tunisia as well. Or the blacks in Tunisia. I mean, uh, we could look at this. You know, um, Vice President Hamala uh, Harris is now in, in um, Ghana, and one of the most pronounced messages really was that human rights are for all human beings. And therefore, even in the case of the Ghanaian LGBTIQ community, she raised that issue, what we now call politely the LGBTIQ <laughs> question that always happens. But I think, you know, we have to also ask the American government, you know, in terms of racism at home, um, over 20, 2021 and 2022, we saw something like 25,000 Haitians um, either deported or um, held in what essentially were almost concentration camps. I mean, that may be a bit strong, but detention centers. Um, and this all happened in a country that believes in human rights. Today, um, in uh, Virginia, um, the uh, family of Ervo Otieno, a Kenyan, a mental health patient is being buried after no less than 10 um, uh, prison, uh, prison warders and mental health uh, practitioners suffocated uh, this young boy um, essentially for about 11 minutes. And the question we need to ask ourselves is human rights selective or has it to be applied across the board? I think that's the, um, the power of the, the report this year. And I, hopefully it, it, it rhymes with a lot of the things we've been saying in this, uh, this, you know, in this panel uh, for several months now. Um, that if the multilateral institutions, the architecture is not revamped for this period, then we are likely to see um, more and more mass crimes, uh, mass um, uh, war crimes, uh, greater displacement, and no end of the misery that comes with the energy crisis and rising food prices. So in a nutshell, it's there. The report is available. It's on the website amnesty.org, and I hope people are able to debate it. We took the, the report to the University of Nairobi yesterday okay. and had about 400 students and lecturers uh, debating it. So I think it is an important conversation. Okay. And uh, so we've seen uh, also uh, 
uh, the renewed and protracted conflicts that uh, led to appalling tra um, tragedies, as you, it is saying in the report, some of them amounted to war crimes and crimes against humanity uh, across the world. Authorities continued the, their heavy-handed repression of uh, universal freedoms. I don't know if this is something that you... Because there, there's this dictatorship that uh, we can see it's a reprisal that is coming up in yeah. Africa yeah. again uh, briefly. I don't know if you have a context of, of Africa and which countries as, as well. I'm not really talking about uh, uh, Kenya as it is right now. Mm -hmm. But if, because it came out yesterday, uh, I've not had the, the privilege of going through it. Mm -hmm. But if you may pick Kenya as a country, what are some of the salient issues that uh, were raised for the report, especially the chapter of amnesty in the country? So, so I think for Kenya, there are a few lessons. The first is, you know, we have to accept that we are in a season of discontent um, and uh, grievance policy, uh, grievance politics is not just alive and well in Kenya, but also globally. And therefore, how you manage, um, you know, the protests, how do you facilitate uh, assembly, freedom of expression, um, you know, we cannot go back to the 1990s, for yeah. example, yeah. of how to manage um, essentially societies wishing to breathe and to express themselves. Act active citizenship is embedded in the Constitution. It will not go away. Um, so therefore, gagging the media, gagging protesters mm -hmm. um, will not help the situation. If anything, it will actually lead to a tipping point. The second thing is that, you know, the uh, demand for uh, a livable... Um, economy uh, or an economy we can live in uh, with lower food costs with lower energy costs um, is you know is imperative now we saw thousands of people on the streets of Pretoria and Johannesburg on March the 20th um, essentially because of the energy crisis and the inequalities so for Kenya I think probably the last example the last um, uh, I guess the last lesson is that we have to think more about um, the gross inequalities that we see in society. I mean, this is what's causing the dynamics. You know, a few kilometers away from the Northlands, um, uh, you know, property, um, on Saturday, as I was driving out on Thika Road, uh, we, we hit a huge jam. And my family and I were kind of a bit confused why was the superhighway reduced to essentially um, probably about uh, five kilometers an hour. And we discovered that what had happened was a um, trailer had, had turned over and beans and, and flour had essentially been released onto the street. And the jam was people, even people in vehicles, jumping out of their cars to grab and scoop up uh, unga and scoop up um, you know, beans um, in order to take this home for Gideri. Now the question we have to ask ourselves is how do you govern a society that is just waiting for a simple accident mm. for people to, to come and loot. Um, we have to manage this tension of the haves and the have-nots better. I think that's the major point. Right, thank you. Let's hear from uh, Professor Noam Damba. Uh, even uh, looking at the entire human rights uh, aspect uh, here in the country, in Africa, maybe you, you have a perspective. We've heard also from uh, Kamala Harris's visit, her visit, her visit here in the country. You always uh, surprise us. I know. Uh, You've been in class with Condoleezza Rice. Maybe this will be a surprise that uh, you're intimately familiar also with uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, Even Bill Gates. <laughs> yes. He went to school with Bill Gates as well. He was a, he was a classmate of Bill Gates. In fact, Bill Gates came up with the idea of uh, Microsoft uh, to yeah. Noam Damba. Uh, so saying, I hope you got yeah, intellectual I, I, I property right <laughs> <laughs> He didn't get the shares yeah, then. He will have well, I was uh, uh, to, to, well, tell you, to, to, tell, to tell you the <laughs> truth, and this is uh, 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 written. Uh. Um, uh, when he first made his proposal, I rejected the idea. Uh. And Stan Koski, my uh, uh, sitting next to me, got so excited, he borrowed money from me. Uh -huh. uh, to put it into this idea, <laughs> Bill, Gates, <laughs> Bill, Gates, Bill Gates was doing. And uh, Stan today is one of the richest people in America. Do you, do you, and, and I've he, always wanted to uh, ask you, do you regret you know, turning down Bill Gates' idea of Microsoft? Or, yeah. Well, it, it was a hippie, basically, around that time. <laughs> uh, you know, and, I, and I look at the way he looked more <laughs> than, <laughs> what <you're saying. laughs> than what he was saying. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't pay attention to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is he talking about? Never underestimate a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Never well, underestimate you know, a hippie. The picture was a failure. This is <laughs> it's a radical failure. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not putting my money. <laughs>
<laughs> but Stan <laughs> borrowed money from me. <laughs> and, and invested. Uh, and invested. <laughs> now invested. he's a billionaire. But I told him to return my uh, <laughs> money with the uh, within two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. <laughs> so so you, uh, yeah, I can't blame. The, the issue is um, uh, the ball. Uh, the, you're making a, a, a good point. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure that Kamala Harris um, was the right candidate. Uh, to travel through Africa at this point, mm -hmm. to deliver that kind of message. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, President uh, Biden would have uh, benefited more uh, to have Barack Obama uh, travel uh, and really resonate with the people and, and his life and everything. Uh, 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 Kamala has been a, a real disappointment um, to the Democrat and also to the U.S. because every time he travel overseas, um, there is there is flack. You know, it doesn't connect with the people, and uh, and, uh, and I think he's he's not sure she's not sure who she is, whether she's a black person or or, or Indian. Uh, you know, so so there is you know the, the, she's not accepted by black people, uh, ordinary black people, higher class, yes, uh, and so. The, to come and to talk about the issue of human right, uh, this is the biggest, uh, the, the constant mistake, particular Democrat, make all the time. They send the wrong messenger uh, to deal with the African wrong issue message. and to demonstrate that Africa is not important. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we think about something else and they think about you. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, there is um, a huge, huge uh, potential impact for the world, and that is thermonuclear uh, weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Russia is, uh, Chinese are playing their cards very close. Mm -hmm. They're very good at chess game. Uh, the, uh, Russia ability has been reduced significantly by, by, by this war. And so what is left with Russia is thermonuclear war. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the Russia is not going to fight thermonuclear war. They know the result of it, and they know what will happen. And Chinese are looking anxiously. Uh, hopefully, America and, and Russia uh, uh, engage in a war, and then China march as the world power. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a potential which is behind the scene. And therefore, don't take Africa for granted. Africa provides most of the natural resources that America and Europe and, uh, 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 and China use right now. Uh, we need to be taken seriously. Uh, I, I said this before and I say it now. Uh, DRC Congo has uh, an estimate $24 trillion worth of mineral, including the, 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 the most important mineral that, uh, that are needed. So when you combine Africa together, our resources, we can feed ourselves uh, when the world treats us as reasonable people. Uh, so I'm not very thrilled about mm. her visit, and I'm not sure that w w what uh, the uh, Biden administration will gain out. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear from uh, Professor Kagwanja. Well, I, I've been trying to read uh, Kamara Harris' uh, autobiography mm -hmm. uh, to get into the kind of a person uh, she is, and I think... Uh, 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 her, her book, I think, uh, uh, the, 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 the most recent one, uh, Kamara Harris, is very interesting in terms of the divided identity. It's not as clear as Obama's, that uh, she's either African or because like, she, uh, she says she was in love. She's, she's a ma her mother's child. Uh, and, of course, the, 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 the fluidity of the family in the uh, American uh, society uh, did not help matters that the father left uh, and therefore, I wouldn't say, she, say she's the wrong person to send to Africa because she's the second most senior most. Mm -hmm. So in diplomatic terms, in, in positioning, uh, the importance uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the, 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 that Africa matters to America, mm -hmm. uh, she's the right person to be here. That's one. Two, you, you've seen the, the, the visit by Joe Biden's uh, mm -hmm. spouse, oh, yes. the, the wife here yeah. in Kenya, mm -hmm. also to, sig to signal that Kenya is such an important country uh, in, in American, uh, you know, uh, issue, um, diplomacy. So that is important. My problem 
is always with the Democrats. Mm. Uh, and, and, and explains why the Republicans do better uh, in their mm. African diplomacy than the, Repub the Democrats. Mm. The Democrats, by and large, are ideologues uh, who are no more interested with what people are saying but what they are themselves saying. Mm. I, I, I mean, you don't go, I, no harm meant uh, mm. about human rights. Mm. Uh, I went personally to America as a Fulbright scholar to study human rights. And I thank the Americans for putting me in the, in the law school in order to understand, understand the legality of, uh, mm. of human rights. But the challenge meeting, uh, facing Africa today is not that of human rights. Mm. Human rights are just consequences of a larger issue. And that's why the Russians and the Chinese are hacking it. And the West is not hacking it. The African problems are a problem of development. Mm -hmm. It is a, our trapped development. Mm -hmm. We have resources, we have everything we need, but we're not moving on. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Chinese are coming in with the solution. Build highways, establish uh, power stations, uh, establish new energy in terms of uh, wind and in terms of solar and, 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 and so on. And let's, let's us as Chinese open the markets for you. So they open the markets. And the partnership between China and Russia is also very important. Uh, I don't know how distant or how behind the curtain they are, but Wagner is clearing the, the field for, for this. So China has, doesn't have to be accused of using the military or using hard power. You know, China is on, 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 on soft power throughout. And when it comes to the Americans, what are they bringing? They are saying they want to counter Chinese and Russians. How can you counter, counter development? What alternative are you offering? Now, they, they, they want to talk about uh, human rights and human rights in a very narrow sense, how we behave in our bedrooms mm. or how we behave with our spouses. That's a very private affair. Well, in, in so far as states will take position in terms of, uh, you know, harming other people because of their sexual orientation, right. that, that, that's, uh, that's another matter. But making it as an agenda and the primary agenda in your international bizarre. relations, it's bizarre. <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of uh, things. I mean, leave this to Irongo, leave this to, uh, to Human Rights Watch, yeah. leave this to others. Exactly. Please, as a head of state, don't take this I as an agenda. Agree. You are completely out of, out of order. How we behave in our bedrooms, with whom we go to our bedrooms, our business. So don't make it your business to teach us who to, ha to go to, to, to have in our bedrooms. So that, that's wrong. Now, I think the uh, one area where America is right is that at the question of violent extremism yeah. and, and putting money behind that, particularly the five countries that are decimated uh, by, you know, violent extremism or Al-Qaeda in the Sahel, uh, Benin, Guinea, Cote d'Ivoire, Togo, Ghana itself, yeah. Mali, and all this. Uh, he, this is a place where democracy is but thriving because of violent extremism. Yeah. And these are vulnerable countries. They have also been devastated by droughts prolonged growth and therefore putting money there is the right thing but uh, signposting countering Chinese influence in Africa as your problem you need to have Chinese as your partners because they are dealing with what you are not dealing with the Chinese are dealing with development you are dealing with other issues so I so in, in short I think uh, you know uh, as Kamara Harris come to Tanzania and to Zambia after leaving Ghana, I, I, wherever she is, if she is listening, change your tone, change your yeah. orientation. Uh, for Africa is in need of development. We want to hear industrialization. What is America going to do to help us industrialize? What is America going to help us eradicate poverty in, in, in our country? Correct. What is America going to do uh, to deal with our deficit Thank in you. terms of debt. Thank let, you. Me, let me just say how, what a brilliant thing you just said. That this, you just said right there, there's dictatorships are propping all over Africa, Deval. And uh, you're quite right. And I've always said that the struggle for Africa has been between dictatorship and democracy. No question about that in my mind. My, my great, the great African leader, Kwame Nkrumah, used to say, uh, I wasn't born in Africa. Africa was born in me. Yep. Debao, 
um, we have three agendas in Africa today. And we need to change the discourse, um, in my humble opinion, about how um, we need partnerships between the United States, China, Europe. What we need is partnerships among ourselves. Um, the, the development in the United States and Europe was not done with partnerships with any other person. It was endogenous. It's organic. Um, of course, capital Debal, and the history of capital was built on the backs of the exploitation of the slavery period and the colonial period. But that's no longer the discourse that we want. The discourse that we want is the is, uh, discourse of afro optimists. How do we develop? How do we get democracy? How do we get regionalism? Uh, my learned senior's contribution. I think that we have to start with one thing. The one most important ingredient to ball in the political economy of Africa is something called leadership. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that in my mind. And the problem of our, of our region, the problem of our continent is leadership. Uh, Debal, if you look at this region that we're in together, Kenya is the only democratic state yes. in, in Tanzania. Just, it's just Tanzania and Kenya. And in fact, Tanzania is a more, what I, I call Tanzania a, a more concrete democracy because the Chama Chama Pinduzi has uh, got uh, its own way of guiding uh, their democracy. But in Kenya, it is a robust Yes. Uh, open, ethnicized, uh, free press. It's, it's got all the ingredients of the 49ers. You know, the 49ers is the, is the, the, the gold rush in California. Uh, <laughs> but in Tanzania, it is the most stable, more processed democracy. And I think that the, well, the way Tanzania is going, it will surpass us. Tanzania is going to become a great country in this region. Yes. And it's not only is it going to become a great region, I think it's going to have a fantastic uh, impl uh, influence on Kenya. Because the, the ball, I spoke to some people in Tanzania, in the leadership of Tanzania, and they're asking me, what's going on in Kenya? And why is it that we always worried. get a flu every time you people cough here? <laughs> we do not want this. We want a stable Kenya. Some people called me from Uganda and said, uh, uh, Mr. Hashi, what's going on? So, Debal, my point is, um, if we want leadership and if we want to transform our economies, we need uh, well, the, the issues of regionalism, the issues of political leadership, the issues of human rights, um, and all these things to be encapsulated and move forward as an agenda. Otherwise, Debal, we're going to have uh, Camilla Harris coming and lecturing us on LGBTs mm -hmm. and the Chinese le telling us that you can take aid and we're not going to tell you anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then we wind so up quick uh, I know because we're heading to the hour I mean I think Akakwanja and um, Hashi have raised important points so obviously um, you know I, I think there is no tension between development and rights uh, development is rights rights based uh, development is what all countries need yeah. um, it's important to be systemic and realize that you know civil and political liberties do not exist in the context of social and economic inequalities mm. and injustice mm. right so you know we would agree on that one there is no point investing in highways if um, uh, they, they are brought down um, by simple um, overturning of a truck and beans um, good, spread yes. across the... What's the highway you know, for? What's the highway for, uh, I absolutely. guess, is the question. So I, I think we have to think a little bit in terms of this. I like the position around industrialization, yeah. um, value addition to the yeah. economies. Yeah. We have to stop Africa being the... Um, basket case. The basket case, but also like the place that people come to extract resources, yeah. you know, without any value addition, because jobless development is just, in a sense, futile. Um, on the issue of countering violent extremism, I think it's, it is really important that we look at how societies are dealing with extremism and radicalization. But it's not just of the nature of terrorism, it's also in the nature of tolerance. Oh. So, you know, in some ways, what happened in Kibra Two day, you know, two days ago, was terrorism, was extremist. Was extremist. Um, when uh, Kamala Harris um, and uh, Nana Ado Akufo speak about the, um, the rights of LGBTIQ communities, it's not just the rights of LGBTIQ communities. It's really in the context of a very vicious anti-homosexuality bill that is going through parliament in Ghana. And just to say that, you know, those um, chickens, if I can quote Martin, Malcolm X, those chickens may come to <laughs> Rooster with us here 
if we also go that route. And Thank I you. hope uh, Honorable Kaluma is, is listening to me right now. <laughs> um, you know, we cannot be a society <laughs> of hatred. We cannot be, uh, you know, and I, I agree with you completely. You know, I, we've discussed with my wife uh, what happens in our bedroom as long as it's non-violent and it is consensual <laughs> um, is yes. our business. Yes. You know, and mean, we protect uh, everybody's uh, rights. What, right. what do you mean non-violent? <laughs> well, well uh, let's not uh, go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parental guidance. Parental guidance. <laughs> advisory. Right. Let's hear from uh, Professor Noam Damat. Uh, Twenty seconds. We're winding up. Uh, the Cut that from the table. The bile, we need sobriety uh, in our leadership in the country. Again, I want to repeat: Kenya is more than all of us, and therefore, the president need to take a ball by its son. Uh, discipline his team, be ready to meet every Kenya mm -hmm. for the course and for the future of this country. Thank you. Peter um, I would want to say that what happened at the Kenyatta farms, uh, you know, from the property uh, in, uh, in Thika Road or the Roero is the most unfortunate chapter in our Kenyan history. Mm -hmm. We should stop it. Never again should anybody wake up to invade another person's property uh, because that hits at the, at the heart of our, of our nation. But that said, we need to do the following. First, as Kenyans, whoever we are, we must recognize that we have a president elected by, through, uh, through our constitution. We may have a problem with our constitution and our institutions, but let's recognize that too. Let's commit ourselves, both the government and the opposition, to create a robust and viable opposition as the watchdog Thank of you. our democracy. And, fin you. and finally, I agree with Hashi, we need to set up an eminent, uh, a em eminent, eminent panel person. yeah. <laughs> of persons, a, a panel of eminent persons who are Kenyans yeah. to kind of mediate the, the kind of crisis we are in. It's a political problem. Thank you. We need to deal with it. Right, thank you. Finally, of course, as uh, uh, Hamid Hashi, yes. uh, your closing remarks. Uh, Dibal, I, I want to give the government some free advice. Uh, 30 this, seconds, please. Because I'm a governance expert and uh, people know me as a communications guru. Appoint a government spokesman and let him speak on behalf of the government. Thank you. Take that in. Yes. Period. Mm -hmm. But we have a gov government no. spokesman. You no. don't have a government spokesman. No. Get a government spokesman to speak about. You saw the police commissioner, how he was speaking. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Who, thank you. Who you made your points. Thank you. We made, you've made your points. We made, terrible. You made, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, 15 seconds. Um, it is time to return to reason. Um, uh, let the elected uh, representatives and also public servants uh, stop the warrior making uh, or the right. warrior stance yeah. and really move to a, a leadership space. Um, to the family of Ervo Otieno, the young Kenyan who was killed in, uh, murdered in um, Virginia, USA. Our condolences also. We, uh, you may be far from Kenya at the moment, but you know, it really, we have an obligation to protect Kenyans wherever they are. And then lastly, I think, um, you know, a, a glimmer of hope. Uh, we've just produced the first minister of Scotland, uh, yep. apparently, um, yeah. Hamza um, Yusuf. Yusuf Pakistan. Um, Pakistan, mother was Kenyan. Yep. Um, if we can produce leadership uh, globally, uh, can we not see it show up here also? Absolutely. Mm. Yes, and uh, you saw the picture there of uh, Humza Yusuf, uh, who has been confirmed as a Scotland's new first minister, who won a closely fought and often beat a race to succeed Nicola Sturgeon as leader of the Scottish National Party, paving the way for him to become the Scotland's first minister and often beat a race to succeed Nicola Sturgeon as leader of the Scottish National Party. Right, we shall be looking at that also next week as well. Thank you very much. And following up also on King Bibi and what is happening in Israel right now uh, with the judiciary overhauling where people are in the streets regarding that. Thank you, gentlemen. I really appreciate well. today. Uh, yeah. And we just want to wind up with the uh, statements of uh, St. Augustine of Ipo, right, regarding what uh, we are facing right now. And he says in, in 